The temperatures are just barely starting to cool off, and we're just days away from what could be our very first frost. We are drawn to the woods this time of year to gather the wild food that has been growing all summer long. We've already gathered lots of hickory nuts and there are tons of black walnuts on the ground by the house. But we are in search of the late summer fruits and berries and maybe some medicinals for our home apothecary. There are four things we're looking for today out there in the woods. You just never know along the way what we might find. Behind us, you can see that there is a really, really far drop off this bluff. But this is where the first thing is that we're gonna be harvesting and foraging today. Our land in, the, in this area has a lot of persimmon trees and the fruits are coming ripe right now. Now, normally under perfect conditions, we would wait until the first frost or just after the first frost to come and get persimmons. But as soon as the frost comes, they drop out of the tree onto the ground. And before we can even get there, the deer and all the other wildlife come and eat all the persimmons. So today we're going to harvest persimmons before the first frost and before the deer come and get them. Now the trees that we're going to pick off of today are probably about a 300 foot hike from here. Not 300 feet down the hill, but it's about 300 feet from here. And I'd say it's probably a good 100 foot drop from here. Now, the persimmons are still gonna taste great. They would be better if they went through a first frost, but they're still gonna taste very good, even if we can get them today, as long as they're good and ripe. So, we're gonna get going. It's quite a hike down there. We'll meet you guys down at the tree. I guess I didn't realize this dropped off quite like this. I think it's down in here that you go down. There's a bunch of wild cherries. This is a cherry tree right here. Well, the tree we were hoping to go to was a no-go. Even though we could see it from the top of the hill, by the time we actually got to it, we realized that just before we got to it, there was a straight down drop, and that tree was actually growing from about probably 20 or 30 feet below there. So there was no way we could get to it safely. So we've hiked around a little bit and we've looked. We did find two other small trees, one right here next to me. It only has a few on it. And then we found another one a little bit up the hill. So we're gonna go for that one too. But let me show you what these persimmons look like. These are, these are pretty soft, so that means they are probably ready. Now, one thing we didn't mention earlier is that our nights have been getting very close to freezing already. We've been the last two mornings right around 35 degrees. So even though we haven't officially gotten a frost, I'm hoping that that was cold enough. And maybe down the hill like this, it may have even gotten down to 32, who knows? So here's what a persimmon looks like. And the skins on these are super bitter. Like if you get the skin itself on your mouth or on your tongue, you'll like pucker up. It's like alum when you get on your on your tongue. It's, it's not a pleasant taste at all, but the inside, 
the pulpy part is very, very good. So we're gonna try to pick as many of these as we can. I'm tempted to eat one, but I know Sarah really wants these to do something with in the house. So I'm gonna hold back right now because I don't know how many we're actually gonna get. I do see another one up here. Oh, and here's a little one here. These aren't nearly as big as the persimmons that you would buy in a store, uh, but most wild things aren't. The thing with these persimmon trees is they don't grow very big, but they grow super tall, so they're hard to get. There we go. Especially in a wooded area like this, because they're trying to grow up and get sunshine. I think that's the only three on this entire little tree that I can see. So let's head up the hill a little bit. The other little tree is right up here. Found part of a bone from something. Never know what you're gonna find when you're walking through the woods. All right, here's the little persimmon tree right here. I can see two on this little branch right here that I think I can reach, but all the other ones are all the way at the top of the tree. Got them. All right. The rest are all the way at the top of the tree, so I think we're going to have to try to shake the tree and see if they'll fall. I saw some fall. Yeah, a few fell. I think we'll shake and then get a couple at a time so we can hopefully find them all. Well, so far we have nine persimmons. We're gonna give the tree another shake and see if we can get some more to fall. Now persimmons aren't very good if they're not pretty ripe. So it's possible that those that are still up on the tree um, that stick up there just aren't very ripe and then they need to stay up there because they're not gonna taste very good anyway. So let's go ahead and give this tree another shake and see if anything falls. Otherwise we need to move on because we have other things that we wanna be getting today and uh, we don't have a whole lot of daylight left. Well, I think leaves fell. Yeah, I think so too. I don't didn't see anything else fall. So I'm gonna say the rest of them aren't quite ready. Yeah, we'll leave them for the deer. Okay, I think it's time to move on. We have a couple different spots to go to, a couple of different things to pick. Oh, it's a thigh burner. I know. Well, we're gonna switch gears and go into another area of our property. It's actually really not very far from where we just were, but you guys, the terrain is completely different. It's like a whole different like territory or it's not necessarily different climate, but it's just like whole different like geography. It's just, it's just strange. In here, it's mostly pines, some cedar. Yeah, it's just, it's just a completely different looking area back here. Now this spring, Kevin and I came hiking back here and found hawthorn berries. There are actually several different varieties of hawthorn berries that grow here in Missouri. I am looking to harvest some of those so that I can bring them back to the house, put them through the freeze dryer and keep them kind of in my apothecary. Hawthorn berries are good for inflammation, they're good for the heart and they're good for blood pressure something wonderful to keep stashed away for any future needs that we might have. So we found a couple bushes um, a few months ago, like I said. I'm hoping that there is still some of the hawthorn berries on there that they didn't drop off or the critters didn't get them. So let's go look around. Well, here is a hawthorn bush. Doesn't look like much right now because it's the end of the season. It's losing most of its leaves. But you can see in here, these like orangish red berries, these are the hawthorn berries. They kind of look like an apple and actually they're in the apple family. And when we have tried these, they actually do taste kind of apple-y, maybe crab apple-y. And on the inside, they have several seeds, kind of like when you open up a crab apple. One telltale sign that this is a hawthorn bush are these thorns. 
these thorns are vicious. They're like an inch and a half long. They're razor sharp. You could probably use these for a needle if you absolutely needed to. Uh, they're pretty vicious, so you have to be careful when you're harvesting not to poke yourself with these massive thorns. So all of these that are kind of orangish red on here are ripe. I'm going to pick off a lot of these. I also did notice that there are a bunch of them on the ground and they look really fantastic. So I'm probably going to uh, pick up some of them that are on the ground too. Way back here in the woods, it's an okay thing to pick these up off the ground. I really want to encourage all of you to find out more about what grows on your land or what grows in your state. I've learned so much since we've lived here in Missouri by just looking up things that I find. Um, I've also joined a couple of groups on Facebook that um, forage for edible and medicinal plants in Missouri. Make sure you check out those kinds of groups that are available for your state. But I do want to tell you that before you ever eat anything that you find out in the forest or while you're foraging, to double and triple and quadruple check that it is edible and that it's not poisonous. Lots of years I've been looking into this and that's why I'm confident um, knowing that not only are they hawthorn berries, <laughs> but they're edible and they are medicinal. But there is nothing better than knowing that you have food on your land, food in your area, and really natural medicine. Well, here's another one here. It doesn't have nearly as many berries on it as the other one did, but we're gonna take the berries off of this one too. I did notice too when we walked up here that right next to us is just a bunch of dewberry uh, brambles. Dewberries are a lot like blackberries and raspberries. Um, but they don't produce as many berries on their uh, branches, on their brambles. So it's always fun to just look around, see what is, you know, located where, and maybe come back here during that season and pick some dewberries. There are some hawthorn berries on the ground too. We'll get some of the good looking ones. It's really dry back in this area, which makes it actually better for this because even though these have fallen on the ground, they've stayed nice and dry, so they're not really rotting, which is good. Well, even though it was about 85 degrees out today, back here in this area, it is so nice and cool and shady, and all of that intense sun is just staying off of you. I'm not sure that you find a more peaceful spot, maybe in the whole world, than it is right back here. It's just a, a really nice spot to be on a day like this. We were hiking to the next spot that we want to go and along the way I noticed this little guy growing right here, a prickly pear cactus. I got a funny story to tell you guys. As many of you know, we moved here about eight and a half years ago from Phoenix, Arizona, where obviously there are a lot of cactus. And we actually brought the entire family out here, you know, Sarah, I, me and the girls, and we were hiking around looking at different properties and I had no idea that prickly pear cactus grew in Missouri. So I made a bet to the entire family. I said, first person to find a cactus gets a million dollars. And not 30 seconds later, Sarah's like, I just found a cactus. And of course I thought she was joking. And lo and behold, there was a great big patch of cactus right there in the woods. And so I still haven't paid up. Uh, I'm working on it but uh, I had no idea that cactus grew in Missouri until we lived here, and I'll tell you, we have it all over this property. Well, it's time to hike down another hill. We are going to be going to look for wild blueberries, actually. We are looking for the high bush wild blueberries. Missouri has tons of different kinds of wild blueberries. These actually don't even really look very much like a blueberry. Uh, and they are very seedy on the inside, but I want to harvest some and just take them back to the house and I don't know, see what I can do with them. Wild blueberries, this type anyway, are, are not much like a blueberry that you'd find in the store. They're not really fleshy. They're not really fruity on the inside. They're mostly seeds with a little bit of juice and pulp on the outside and then a skin around it. 
but Kevin and I found these not too long ago when we thought, you know what, we need to come back here and harvest some of these and just, I don't know, try to extract some juice out of them with my steam juicer or, or something. I don't know. But we're going to go down. We're going to try not to fall down this hill. I want to show you guys the stone rock ledge that's down there that's kind of scary. Um, and we're going to harvest some of them. But I think you'll be kind of amazed what these wild blueberries look like. So we're here by this like long ledge, such a long ledge, and it goes like straight down there, probably 50 feet maybe, I don't know. It goes straight down there, it's pretty dangerous. You know, kind of some steps down most of the way, but I don't want to fall down there. But right on this side of this ledge, Basically, this whole side of just the upper part of this ledge is just filled with these high bush blueberries. They are like completely dark purple now. And um, some of them are starting to like shrivel up a little bit, like we're kind of late in the season or something. But there are still quite a few of them here. They're actually they're pretty sweet, but they're very seedy. They do have the flavor of a blueberry, but not like just like the explosion of flavor in your mouth, like a blueberry from the store or a fresh one from a blueberry bush that you would go to like a blueberry patch. But they're really fun. Some of them are juicier than others right now. So Kevin and I are just gonna go ahead and, and pick some of these. And I don't know, I might try to figure out something to do with them back at the house. I wonder what's living down there. Who knows, but he probably doesn't want to meet us any more than we want to meet him. You so. should stick your hand down there. I was going to hold the camera so you could. <laughs> That's why I rarely come in the woods without a gun. Just in case whatever's living down that hole decides he wants to come out and say hi. found a bush here that is just absolutely loaded with blueberries. Now many of you know that I eat blueberries almost every single day. I've talked about it a lot because I'm such a creature of habit. I eat blueberries and yogurt I would say every day. Not almost every day, every day. And normally I buy blueberries at Costco and when I buy them I always try to buy wild blueberries. Now they're not the same as these wild blueberries, they're a little bit bigger than this, but they're smaller than a you know domesticated blueberry and the wild blueberries, at least the ones that you can find in the stores, are really supposed to be much higher in things like antioxidants, vitamin C, and all of that. So I would imagine that uh, these that we're picking out here in the woods are just jam-packed with all of those things as well because they're you know they're just kind of concentrated now i i actually really like these just to eat like this i know sarah sarah's not a, as big of a blueberry fan as i am anyway but for me even though these have some seeds in them they're really good now it would take a lot of work to survive off of these blueberries it's just really nice to know where on your land different things grow so that if you do need them, you know where to go. Well, we could literally be here for hours picking just more and more of these blueberries because honestly, like I told you before, this whole ridge is just filled with them. You guys haven't even seen like half of them, but we are starting to lose daylight. I want to show you how much we got. We probably got a cup in there to just kind of experiment with and to just kind of let other people try them. Well, there's one more thing that I want to gather before we go in for the day. So we are going to hike back up this hill, jump in the UTV and go to our next spot. Ooh. What? Oh my gosh, right. you should see this disgusting spider. 
as we were coming up the hill, I walked like right into a spider web right into my face and the creepiest spider, it was like huge. It was big and like yellow with like black and white stripes on its legs. You guys, I actually don't normally mind spiders, but this one was disgusting. I'm not sure how well this will show up on video, but I don't know if you guys can see all these spider webs right on the ground as we walk up this hill. I have no idea what kind of spiders those are for, but it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, there's just hundreds of them as we walk up this hill. It's just the perfect time of day right now where you can see them. I know when I come out in the morning uh, early while there's still dew, you can see them really plainly because the dew sticks to all those spider webs. It's just a really neat thing. Oh, another critter hole. You want to stick your hand in there? This one I might actually, because it doesn't look like it's being used to me. There's too many pine needles around. Doesn't look like anything's been in there recently. You're not going to stick your hand in there. No, I'm still not going to stick my hand in there. <laughs> Well, we're at our last stop, but I wanted to show you guys something that's really important. And I want to reiterate that if you don't know what you're looking at or what you're harvesting, if you don't know 100% that it's edible or medicinal, don't eat it. And I want to show you why. Kevin noticed these berries over here, which look very, very similar to the berries that we just harvested. Look, they're about the same size, the same color, these are not edible berries. These are actually, actually honeysuckle berries, um, and they look a lot like those blueberries, but they're not. Uh, they have a completely different stem. These, look, these uh, leaves look entirely different. The whole bushes look entirely different. Um, and so that is why it's so important for you to know exactly what you're looking at and double, triple, quadruple, check your sources to make sure that what you're eating is actually edible. Well, I am standing here next to a really important tree. Actually, the type of tree doesn't matter at all and it's dead. So, but the importance of this tree is that it has basically living medicine on it. On these branches is a lichen called usnea. Uh, a lot of people call it old man's beard, um, old man's lichen, beard lichen. And this is a very uh, powerful herbal medicine. Usnea is antibiotic, antiviral, antimicrobial. It is a very, very powerful medicine. When I find where it's living, normally I just leave it where it's at until I need it. If it's on the ground, a lot of times I'll harvest it, put it in my pocket, bring it back to the house. But when it's actually living and growing on a tree or a dead tree like this, I just leave it and then I remember where it's at for when I need it in the future. Usnea grows very, very slowly. So I want to give it as much opportunity to get as big as it can before I need to harvest it and bring it into the house. I normally use it as a tincture. I create a, a tincture with it and use it that way. And uh, what you can do is just pop it off of here, uh, take it into the house and create a tincture with it. Now there are lots of other lichens that grow on trees, that grow on rocks, grow on the ground that look a lot like this. So again, I don't want you to just go to any lichen or moss that you find on the ground and assume that it is usnea. You really need to research it. How to identify it better than just me saying it grows on a tree. Um, but I like to find resources like this that I can go back to later on um, if I need it. Now in our part of the country, usnea grows just like this. It doesn't get very long, just kind of gets kind of bushy like this when it's really big. Uh, but there are parts of the country, I think like in Washington state, where it grows like way down really long. That's why it's called old, old man's beard because it gets really long like an old man's beard. Here in the Missouri Ozarks, I don't know why, maybe it's because of the cold, I'm not sure, but uh, it doesn't really get much bigger than this. There is a branch that has fallen off this tree over here. I'm gonna grab. You can see how it grows on here. See, I wanna give you an example of why you shouldn't just 
think everything is usnea. This is the usnea, or usnea, depending on how you say it. And right next to it is just a different kind of lichen. This isn't the same thing. I actually know that this lichen can be used as like dye for clothing, uh, but they're just completely different. So I am going to take this into the house so that I know that I have some of this usnea that I can make a tincture with. So that is the, the fourth thing that we have foraged and harvested from our land today. Well, we were just on our way back up to the house. We were driving past the hay field and all the cows had to come and say hi. Guess they wanted to be on today's video. They think we have something really good. I don't know what they think we have, but lately, I think as we get closer to hay season, they just start to get more excited to see us. They're less interested in all the grass that's kind of starting to die off, but we never bring them anything, so I don't know what they what they think we're gonna do. Well, the sun is setting. It's a beautiful evening. It's a wonderful time to wrap up our walk out in the woods to forage some things for the apothecary, some things to try to experiment with in the kitchen. It was a wonderful time out in the woods. And one of these days, I am gonna figure out a way to get down that hill to pick some more of those persimmons. On our last homestead, we had a ton of persimmons. Mm -hmm. On this one, we don't have many except for the ones back there. So it's kind of a bummer today to find out they were further down the hill than I thought. So hard to get. Maybe a zip line would work. I don't know. I, I'm not getting on the zip line. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for coming with us today. We know that you very much enjoyed our last foraging video. So I'm so glad to be back at it. And I'm so glad to hear from you guys that you enjoy it. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.